it is said to give the beer a body without contributing too much uh, with taste. The second malt variation, also 20%, uh, is melanoidon malt, which is supposed to be closely related to Münchner malt or Munich malt. Uh, it will give the beer an amber color, it is said, uh, and also contribute with the tastes of um, a roasted bread uh, or and give the beer similar pro properties as when you do a decoction mash. So that will also be quite interesting to see the effects on the final result of the beer. So the grain has been crushed and added to the system and I will now start the brewing. It's always so nice to see the first wort coming out from the pipe. So also it's going to be quite interesting to see the color of it as the melanoidon malt was supposed to color the wort uh, amber. Adding some interim footage. The boil has started and I've just added 11 grams of magnum hops. The color of the wort is, um, as they said with the melanoidon malt, it's very much amber-like. Probably a bit hard to see with the contrasts here, but once I've, once I've um, deposited it in the fermentation vessel, it will be more clear to see the color of it. Quite excited for this beer, actually. Uh, and I hope to learn the individual tastes of these two specialty malts after this. The work has been cooled down to appropriate temperature and now I'm just pouring it into the fermentation vessel and at the same time aerating it. And there's a quite some foam that foam that is filled up now on the work. I had a packet of uh, Mangrove Jacks M31 laying around, so I'm thinking of using that. I think it's a mixed drain as uh, you have some black and lighter um, pieces of grains of uh, yeast in it. So let's see the result. I've never used it before. Also there I say that this was probably not the most ideal yeast for this purpose as it will contribute with some Belgian esters. But it was the only one I had laying around so I had to make you. Sorry for the dishwasher noise in the background. I just wanted to show this quite interesting amount of foam. I never had the foam sticking up this much before. Um, now it has laid down a tiny bit, but um, uh, it was actually sticking up quite a lot from the top of the bucket. Um, I would actually think that this is due to the carapils or carafoam amount added to this. 20% uh, that I added was actually the maximum amount recommended by the producer Weyermann and the final gravity at 10.050. So it's summertime here in Sweden and really hard to cold crash the beer. I noticed that it was quite um, foggy and I tried to do my best to make some sort of a cold crash similar environment for the for the fermentation vessel. So I put put it out during the night on the balcony and it was 10 degrees, 5 in the morning. Soon thereafter I put it in this uh, brew cooler jacket uh, and then in the morning I also put some ice clamps so it has been there all day. Hopefully I have reached some low uh, low temperatures. I hope to get around 2 degrees or so, so let's see the results. Uh, the LCD strip starts to uh, rise, but it's quite cold to the touch and I would actually estimate that it's well under 10 degrees Celsius. So, and also the fogginess, it doesn't really come through in the, here in the video, but um, it has actually, it seems as, as um, it has gone down a bit. And I can't really achieve any better picture uh, of, of it with any light setting. So you just have to trust me on this one. <laughs> Time for bottling. 
and the bulk of the bottles I have sanitized uh, through uh, putting uh, or first cleansing them with water and then putting a drip of water into them, uh, sealing them up with a tin cap uh, or tin foil cap and um, putting them uh, in 150 degrees Celsius for one and a half hours in the oven. I will be bottle conditioning the brew uh, using regular table sugar. Um, and to my help, instead of having to measure the exact grams per bottle, I have this measuring device, which has the three standard European sizes um, already measured out for th 33 centiliters, 0.5 liters and 0.75 liters. So it's just a matter of uh, filling the measurement up and um, pouring it into the bottle. So I will finish doing this for all the bottles and then I will fill the uh, beer into the bottles. And the filling process is pretty easy. I have this tube here that has this um, trigger in the bottom that opens a valve when I when it's pushed up. So when it hits the bottom of the bottle, uh, it will start to release the, the liquid uh, and it will fill from the bottom up uh, and uh, minimizing the amount of oxygen that comes in contact with the beer so yeah the oxidation is minimal okay here we are in the northern sweden a uh, lovely summer day and it's time to taste the beer So for sure, a lovely amber tone to the beer, um, and um, yeah, uh, um, a nice foam cap on it as well. Yeah, it has uh, lots of um, Belgian kind of esters, so let's um, try to do a tasting, uh, disregarding as much as possible of that um, Belgian tone of it, and, and focus on what kind of uh, flavors the the the, the malts uh, contributed to the beer for sure it does still taste like a, a triple but um the boar ha the body uh, has a broader um taste to it so it's not as sharp tasting as a regular belgian triple which is actually a quite nice um, uh, variation of it. Uh, for sure, it's not the style typical uh, Belgian triple, but um, I do like the 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 kind of um, variation it gives to the to this style. Um, as for how I will use it in the future, I'm not sure really. I will probably use the the melanoida malt, which I think is more easy to to distinguish in this uh, beer um, I will use that probably in in lighter beers so no no not in um, not in uh, stouts or porters but I do find a place in it in maybe a German box or maybe Weizen box for example um, uh, maybe in, in some kind of darker uh, German ales as well um, yeah, I think it's um, it. This was a nice test, and uh, um, I have uh, gotten a more uh, a big a better picture of how I will actually use it. It it, it doesn't add uh, nearly as much flavor as a caramel malt would do, but it still uh, gives the beer a rather different kind of uh, both. Uh, uh, image in terms of the the color uh, but also uh, it it gives the beer a, a, a subtle more deeper body to it without overwhelming the rest of the of the other components in the beer